Hello, I'm Dwight Norris of FishingNetworks.com. And I'm here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Just crossed over from Boston in the Financial District, right next to MIT. And the Broad Canal is right behind me. And today I'm gonna to do a little bike fishing. A bike over here, as you can see here. I got my rod and reel. And I'm ready to do some action. Let's do it. So I've got uh, something a little different today. I did bring my hat for a minute, but I unhooked it beforehand. And now it's so windy, it's not just the cars going by. It is really windy. And I'm at a point at MIT where a overbridge goes around the corner. And in between, there's some water. Take a look here. See there's some water there and there's a bridge there. Here I am on the other side. So I'm hoping that the wind's coming toward me and in this little corner right here, there'll be some mass kind of spooled up trying to get out of the wind. So I'm gonna do a little different today. I'm gonna work something I don't ever usually do, but the ND Yak Angler, I believe it's North Dakota Yak Angler. So good at catching smallmouth and stuff. When it's really cold and slow, he said put on the jig. So I have a little, a Ned Rig flat top jig here. You see it's flat there. So it's kind of like a Ned Rig. I put a, a blue, a black crawfish on there and I only had like a brown jig. So it doesn't look a little weird, but maybe they're hungry enough and I'll work it slow enough and it's small enough. I might be getting myself really high. My first real jig back. So let's try it. Be interesting. Please for me, maybe not for you. Now usually there's a whole lot of weeds right here, but it's November, the end of November, and it's kind of thinned out. So I'm wondering if there's some roaming bass on this 60 degree day, just seeing what's around. Now I'm working this crazy slow. This is also the area where there are crayfish. They come out of the, uh, oh, I can't remember now. There's another river right here that connects to the ocean just like the Charles River does. I can't remember the name of it. But if you're around here, you know what I'm talking about. There's crayfish in there. They do come in here. And there are smallmouth here. So I've seen it on fish brain. People catching three pound smallmouth right where I fish for years. I got nothing. That means I'm using the wrong thing or doing the wrong technique. So I watched the ND Yak Angler try to get some knowledge because my electrician said he was the best angler he's ever seen. And I had to watch them. It's very peaceful, very calming. And then he pulls up big boys from the, uh, you know, Minnesota, <coughs> Minnesota, North, North Dakota, Illinois area. You know, the, I forgot what it's called. A thousand lakes or no, uh, something. But man, that guy is good. I hope one day I'm as good as him. But until then, I'm just gonna keep fishing just like you are. Remember, go to fishingatwork.com. Right below the screen, you can get your 10 step process to go fishing at work for free. No email, no nothing. Click download, come soon. And then you'll be out here in no time. And at times you never thought possible because you took the initiative to put it on your priority list. That's a secret. Now, if you look at any time management or whatever stuff, you'll see them saying you have to make it a priority not your priority and somebody else's priority is going to become your priority so what do you want to do work forever or go fishing oh good this thing is recording now last time i cut it off and all my hour of banter was erased i didn't catch their thing so it had to be something enjoyable to watch at least i could talk some trash Oh, I fish. That was weird. Is that a rock? The 
glare is killing me, even with these glasses. Maybe they need some of their teeth. I'm gonna go up in the corner. Oh man. What's happening? There's like no wind there. Probably just some bluegills. But man, if I get some, something takes this jig. Holy smokes. It's gonna be a good day. In the yak angler, didn't really jig it up and down. That, that is a technique. What he did was a slow jag. He dragged it like this, a couple inches, two or, two or three, and then reel it in slack. Pause, drag it, reel it in slack. Pause, drag it, and then the next thing you know, you said they would pick it up like a silent, either the, either the line stops when you pull it, or you, they give a slight pull. But like I'm talking like you might think it's uh say it might feel like bluegill. It's very deceptive. And then you hook it into it and you got a five pound small enough bass on there. Trying to take your rod from it. Sneaky. Man, it's a nice day. 61 degrees high. November. Man, it's been quarantine so long. I don't even know what day it is. I don't know what's happening. 30. Oh man. Uh, good news of working a little bit earlier. To use your time better when there's less daytime during the day. You know, getting off at 5 o'clock and then it's being pitch black outside. That ain't cool unless you like night fishing. Because night fishing comes earlier. Now me, uh, huh, I'll do it sometimes. But man. A lot of places aren't easily accessible, or they're in some sketchy places. I just don't want to be there at night. Hello. Most people don't want to do that either. Or they're in their houses and stuff where they like to see people that are fishing around there because they're on the edge of their property. But when it's dark and they see somebody jumping through the woods, they don't like that. So don't do that if that's what happens around your neighborhood. Slow drag here. Not quite felt anything. <laughs> Got the muffler in that BMW M3. Rocket. All red. You know that shirt's tight. Keep looking good though. Got the right rim. None of those silly rims that don't make any sense. I used, to, I used to want something like that, but now all I want is a big old truck. That or a BMW M6. Um, it's like the only car that's really spoken to. Everything else, I don't really care about no car. Does it pull a, does it pull a boat? Nope. And, uh, not interested. spot to be sitting in. It's like we've got some islands here. We got a reduction in the wind. There used to be weeds here so the weeds would die down and then the bottom. Perfect place for some crayfish or something else to hide. Maybe your shrimp. Okay. I think I always think something's gonna be here. Maybe maybe I'm always wrong. <laughs> The water's only like five, six feet here too. Just over there. That's that grass I was talking about. There's some old, there's some, some grass down there.
still wondering about the strategy. the camera around and do a little uh we'll do a bait change so i could help myself i had to pull out that raffle minnow again man it's small it's light it's, it's a little windy for this thing but i gotta throw it in there i gotta throw it in there so i'm gonna take the time to do that now as you see i haven't tired it on yet maybe i shouldn't have started the video but let's check now if everything that sucks today I don't know what I'm doing. Chris don't know what I'm don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna have to throw on some big bait called fish bites. Now you saw me use the uh, the, the bag of blood worms before. But they have all these other flavors I haven't even bought yet. So like the uh, the shrimp one and the clam one and once I even have the lures inject it with it, like swim baits and stuff. I'm thinking I'm gonna be trying out that whole line of things. Even the, uh, the bait shops in Cape Cod are, vet are vetting it as a fantastic alternative to, you know, buying their baits. Like, buy this. I mean, it's around the same price as a bait, and you can probably use it for a year. It's the amount of, like, vacation fishing we do in the Cape Cod, but I'm talking, it's like, Worth as much as like 50 worms. It's really technically 50 worms. The equivalent of what's in that bag. So, if we get a little further down there, I might start a saltware episode, which will be the same day, and I'll just slap that on and see if I can't get something on the other side of the bridge. That bridge. high up that it's popping out of the water. I have to uh, grip my rod real low. Otherwise it's, it's a top layer of water. Yeah, like the further I cast the better it is. Give you a little look at actually look at this corner first. Look down there. See that corner? That's what I was why don't we just throw it out there? That's what I was talking about. Like, the ones that come in this way, the corner is just protected. I don't hurt the big foot in the head each time. Like, literally, the sun is blind. I need some real.
be looking for spots that are away from the wind. And I think I have a few ideas. And most of them are over on the other side of the river. Over here at the broad canal at the exit of it and we'll be fishing in this corner and off of the edge you'll see that in a second but just look over here you'll see this pylons here that's the exit of the broad canal still got my little minnow on we're gonna see if there's any bass hanging around here or crappy those two things will probably hit it if i get lucky a giant bluegill but i'm not gonna say anything other than, other than that <laughs>
Ferry here. No lights on the minnow? What is going on? There's something going on here. They can't all be these cranking and stuff. Um, I'm going to start getting desperate soon on this side. I might actually go to the other side to see the sea and see what's happening there. Just a little push. these videos off and I'm going to do a saltwater one with the uh, fish bites and see if I can't get some small action there and then I'm going to hit the other side of the river on the way back and try some other things around some other things out at some old fishing spots. So we're at the last spot of the day. It's an old fishing spot here where I caught the biggest uh, bass I did when I had a Berkeley car worm and there's a bunch of weeds usually out here. Great topwater fishing. Right now everything's down. There's like eight swans out there eating. So I'm gonna throw my raffle in it again. I never give up with this thing. Let's see what happens. Just realized I left a little tag line at the end. I have to snip that off. Got the little nail clipper. Snip it off. Leave a little excess. Take the scraps. Put it back in your tackle box. Throw it away when you get a hook. Environmentally cautious. Right there for a second, but there's weeds out there, man.
Let's move a little bit to the to the left. Another spot. Same there. Hope I won't end up in the water. Wait. a little bit this way. Nothing by here, but there's a guy on the other side of the bridge here, which you see right here, passing a rather large spinnerbait or chatterbait. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I gotta get moving instead of asking what's going on. And we're gonna try out the uh, muddy river. So, guys, this is gonna be the end of my uh, freshwater show here. I'm here at the muddy river. The sunset's coming. I don't have any front lights, so I have to make this quick. I'm gonna go back to it. We're all set. We're at Casa Mass here at some very cold times. Let's see if I can get some action going. So, let's go.
Nothing yet, guys. Have a little talk. So things were uh, as great as I wanted it to be. Didn't catch any freshwater fish today. Didn't catch any saltwater fish today. Did a little exploration. Tried a few things out. Didn't make anything happen. But I did go do a lot of fishing today. But it's not like catching. Remember, it's November. It's slow. I don't know what I'm doing out here. This time period is warm and it's crazy. But if you want to do the same thing, please go to fishingnetwork.com and get the 10-step process to go fishing at work pdf which is for free no email required just click download consume and it's right to your computer and you have time to see what's going on in there see what you need to do so you can replicate what i'm doing you get out here and go fishing and show me how to actually catch some fish because i'm having a rough time today but we all do and that's fishing so go do that